Welcome to the second episode of The Big Picture. We're here at the Fitzwilliam Museum to take a look at Vermeer's Woman, Secrets and Silence. We're here with Timothy Potts, the director of the Fitzwilliam Museum. Could you talk to us a little bit about how this came about? Certainly. It's um, a, a really an opportunistic exhibition where it came about through a particular loan. We had been asked by the Louvre in Paris to lend uh, one of our most important paintings, um, a Titian of, of Tarquin and Lucretia, which we were very reluctant to do because it's one of our most important and we very really lend it. But they were very, very keen to have it caught as one of the most important things in an exhibition they were doing. And that provided an opportunity for us to have a conversation about what they might lend to us, one of their most important paintings for one of our most important paintings. So we had that discussion and um, we ended up asking for the Lace Maker, which is you know, arguably their second most important painting in their collection, and they agreed to lend it to us. So that was the starting point, having one of the most iconic paintings in Western art history, which the Lace Maker is. And then we went and talked to various of the Dutch specialists who work in this field about what exhibition we could build around this painting, which wasn't just exploiting the fact of having a trophy masterpiece, but something that really would tell a story about an aspect of Dutch art that hadn't been told before in an exhibition. And we set upon, or in the end settled upon, these representations of women it is particularly women in the interior of their homes doing rather private, intimate things in some cases, playing a musical instrument, reading a letter or whatever. Um, and this is a major subject in Dutch art in the 17th century which hasn't been there before. And Vermeer is the great master of it, although a number of other painters of the time also work in that, um, on that subject. So that's how it came about. This exhibition is built around women in their private spheres, mm -hmm. but Dutch art in general is perhaps rather more domesticated than any other. Well, it's certainly in the sense that it's not religious, that's true, of course, the Reformation, and that's why um, the, the, the market, this is why in Dutch art particularly, but in the Protestant countries generally, the, all these new subjects come to the fore in the 17th century, later 16th and 17th centuries, to life. Um, low-life subjects, domestic subjects, anyway, things that are not religious and don't belong in churches. So this was, in, in the broad sense, a very a relatively new phenomenon, and domestic life was one of these aspects. So yes, that's, it's no accident that this is happening in Northern Europe and in Protestant Europe, but not elsewhere. Many of these paintings are framed, so to speak, by mm. archways or curtains. Mm. Um, could you talk to us about the theatricality of the paintings? Well, yes, it's, they are in some ways very straightforward paintings. They're women, as I said, in their homes, doing things, you know, the toilet or doing their hair or whatever. But also they're in a very private and intimate context, which normally wouldn't be the subject of a painting. So understanding those layers of meaning and what is private and what is public is part of what these paintings are about and there will sometimes be a woman on a threshold, literally at the threshold of a door or at a window, in some ways inviting the viewer in, engaging with, their, um, engaging with them visually. And it's sometimes not clear what's going on, and they're somewhat mysterious paintings, and that's part of why they've been so intriguing to art historians and to authors and writers. You know, the girl with the pearl earrings is a, a case in point. Um, and there are sort of coded messages for what's going on. Sometimes it's actually quite explicit. There are women partially undressed or sitting on a bed and whatever, a dog in the bed. Other times there's just a knowing glance or sometimes they're just doing their needlework as with the lace maker. But all of them are in private spaces doing something that normally a stranger wouldn't be able to see. And yet here we are as the observer, the stranger somehow in the space. So they're all playing with this idea of what is private, what is not private, and why, how did you get to be in the space, the place you are to be able to see them doing what they're doing. We were talking about the division between the private sphere of women and the outside world, but within those private spheres there are also divisions between um, the servants, back corridors, um, often leading through doorways into more resplendent areas. Mm -hmm. of the home. Um, is that a particular interest in, in Dutch painting or is that something that's being drawn out in this exhibition quite particularly? Well it's part one of the variations on this, this 
phenom- the broader phenomenon of showing the real world of the day, you know, which is not the sacred world, it's not religious painting. So it's both high life and indeed at Vermeer's time and in the decades following, so from around the middle of the 17th century and onward, these scenes become much more about refined life, women in beautiful silk dresses, as you see in this for me here, who play um, instruments and do uh, engaged in suitable pursuits for a, you know, a woman um, in proper attire and doing all the proper things. But then there are also the scenes which show suggestively improper things. And indeed, the previous decade, the first half of the 17th century, they more or less dived into this revelry and that you see these things, also not in Dutch, but also in Flemish art, broibles and the Jansteins, which are full of people behaving very badly, getting drunk, cavorting, you know, all sorts of improper things going on. So it's both the very low life end of things and the back of the rooms of the servants and so on, and also the more refined, proper, appropriate behaviour that you see in a painting like this. So they're actually interested in both, but there is, if, you, if there's a general trend, it is from the lewd, low life subjects towards the more refined scenes, pivoting around about the, the 40s of the 17th century. So you would say that the divisions are more interested in the moral differences rather than, say, socio- any socio-economic? I think, it's, I think it's all of that and both. The fact that they're also, this period, being collected by... These are very valuable and expensive paintings. They were the most expensive paintings of their day, more so than Italian works, Spanish works and others. And they were collected by princes, um, not just in, in of course, in, in the Netherlands, but also around Europe. And, but in, in, in uh, the Netherlands, collected principally by wealthy um, businessmen, merchants and so on, who are acquiring the wealth and means to have this sort of um, expensive, these expensive paintings, have their women dressed in expensive silks and satins and so on, and, and have furniture and um, you know, carpets, tapestries, and paintings such as you see here. So they are wanting, tending, when they get to that level of affluence, they're tending to want paintings which reflect that and show elegant ladies doing you know, appropriately elegant things rather than people cavorting in a low life way. So I think that the, the trend in subject matter also reflects the growing wealth of the provinces, uh, the Dutch Republic, and uh, the wealthy burghers, the merchants, and so on, having the means to buy paintings. And so this is the sort of painting they wanted to have on their wall, rather than, if you like, um, you know, peasants cavorting and um, getting drunk and all those sorts of things. Although that, that stream still continues, but this becomes the predominant one. And what do you expect or hope the visitors to this exhibition to take away with them? First of all, they're just enjoying some extraordinary works of art for their beauty and the visual qualities they have, which are quite extraordinary, particularly Vermeer, there just is a magic about the way he can capture sort of a moment of concentrated attention, the way the lace maker is working on her um, embroidery or lace, whatever it is she's making. Um, and the highlights, the reflections, the light. I think it's partly the, nat- the naturalness of the colour and the light that he creates. There's just a magic to them about the nature of the scene and the photographic. It's hard to avoid using, it's an anachronistic term, but the photographic nature of the effect that he achieves, it's like a frozen moment. And uh, he does it in a way not even any of the others, I think, of in this exhibition or of that, of that period do. So it's not an accident and it's not um, for nothing that Vermeer is considered the great master of that period. He he is. But so there's that visual, you know, lusciousness, and I think you just revel in it. But also it's telling the story, a very interesting point about social history, um, the role of women in this society, and how art as a whole is moving away from its narrow concentration on religious subjects. Within a century, we have this explosion of scenes of everyday life which was unimaginable, you know, in before, say, the middle of the 16th century. So it's a huge, one of the great um, broadening out, if you like, of subject matter in Western art history. And in Dutch art, more than any, we see, you know, an extraordinary um, interest in representing the life of the people around them, rather than another world of, you know, God and angels and saints and so on. 
this was people really trying to tell the story of what's happening in the society. And I think that's fascinating to see too.